Jay Sano without intro music. Jay Sano with intro music. Intro music remix. Hello everybody and welcome back. It is Jeff again and today we're going to do some learning and have some fun. So basically I want to teach you guys some stuff about the medical field since that's what I'm in but I figure the best way to do that is with Minecraft. So check out what I have been able to do. I'm going to show you a heart rhythm. As you can see we're going across and now we have what you would call an EKG or one lead EKG or a cardiac rhythm strip going on right now. Now I'll show you, I'll link my other video in the description. I've uh, built a contraption of the heart before and showed you guys how blood pumps through the heart. Today we're going to just look at a couple basic EKG rhythms that I happen to make with some redstone contraptions to also not only because it looks really cool but so you guys can learn something so if you guys want to see what's going on here you guys have probably seen this before in movies or in um, in real life or even just online looking at stuff so what do we really have so the pink line is representing moving through time like that's kind of the right now time whereas the the residual line is the leftover of what you're already seeing so if we follow the pink the next pink line that starts it's going to go up on what you call a p wave so that first little hump is the p wave now that is where the atria first depolarizes basically it starts its little beat at that point it moves on to this next big spiky thing right down up down that is called the qrs complex that is when the ventricle is actually doing its depolarization. So basically the ventricle is beating at that point. It is contracting in order to start pumping blood through the rest of the body. It's a big spike because it's actually the powerhouse and the work that what's really going on at the end and forcing the blood through the body. Now that final little hump that happens, it looks kind of like the P wave, but it's different than the P wave. It is the T wave. So you get your P, your QRS, and your T. That's exactly how an EKG is read. The T is actually the ventricle like repolarizing and settling back down and getting ready for the next beat. Now you might ask yourself, why do I not see the atria repolarize if I see the atria depolarize, the ventricle depolarize, and the ventricle repolarize? Well, actually, the atria is repolarizing at some point within that QRS complex, So, but it's just overshadowed by the force of the ventricle depolarization, so you just don't see it in there. But this is what's called normal sinus rhythm. This is kind of the rhythm that you want to see a person's heartbeat in. Normal sinus rhythm, it's always a good thing. That's what you always want. That's what you're always going for. Most people watching this video, their heart probably is in this rhythm right now. Now, I don't have all the rhythms created, but I can show you guys some more rhythms. So let's see, what's after normal sinus rhythm? If we stop the normal sinus rhythm from going on, see, so we'll have it finish off. It'll, it'll finish its little run. Let's now go take a look at ventricular tachycardia so ventricular tachycardia what happens here is the signal instead of starting at the atria like it's supposed to and everything working together the signal is actually running through just the ventricle and in a very very fast way which is actually very bad this rhythm right here if you see it looks kind of like a sine wave um, it's not exactly like a sine wave and this is maybe not the most perfect representation of ventricular tachycardia but if you ever see this on an EKG monitor you're in some problems right now. This is one of those rhythms that's considered a lethal rhythm. Now it's possible to be fine in this rhythm, very unlikely, but it's possible. There's ventricular tachycardia with a pulse, ventricular tachycardia without a pulse. I'm getting a little bit more into the medical field than you guys probably want to know, but it's okay. Ventricular tachycardia without a pulse is one of the key aspects of CPR. If you learn basic life support and CPR, um, and ACLS actually, it's more advanced cardiac life support. If you see somebody in a rhythm like this and they don't have a pulse, you immediately CPR goes and you defibrillate with a defibrillator. That is 
it's a requirement. If you have a pulse, you can see how they're working with it. I've seen people in ventricular tachycardia who actually were fine. Uh, for a while. They don't usually maintain being fine, but a lot of times they have a lot of detrimental effects. They get confused, they get very hypotensive, or their blood pressure goes down really low, and they're not perfusing their body properly. So this is one of those rhythms that's bad. That was able to be shown to you guys here in Minecraft. So let's stop the ventricular tachycardia and move on. I have two more rhythms for you. Another rhythm that is also a very bad rhythm. We'll wait until this thing finishes. A very bad rhythm. Not that one. That's a bad one. This is called a ventricular fibrillation. This is kind of like your... Things aren't working right at all. It's basically just a lot of electrical activity and nothing good is happening. Basically, this is the rhythm that you're in when normally in a, a movie about like medical stuff... If somebody's getting shocked, most likely it's because they go into this rhythm. This rhythm is actually better than a flatline rhythm because of the fact that this rhythm is not perfusing your body at all, but you're able to shock it with a defibrillator, whereas a flat line rhythm, you cannot. But this, if you ever see this, you're in some trouble. V-fib, bad thing. And again, shown to you guys in Minecraft. But that being said, it brings us to our final rhythm. And that is the good old flatline asystole. This is obviously the easiest one to make. <laughs> but if you ever see this on a monitor, things are most likely not going well at all. Flatline rhythms are bad. And unfortunately, I got some little residual V-fib left over on the edge. But there is a flat line rhythm. Flat line rhythm, not good at all. So let's go back to our good old normal sinus rhythm. Because this is what we want to see. We're going to first get rid of this end V fib really quickly. Now they're kind of running all with each other at the same time. Our normal sinus rhythm, it goes. There we go. And there's normal sinus rhythm. So there you guys have it. An EKG or a cardiac rhythm strip in Minecraft. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stick around if you want to see how it was done. All right, everybody. So the EKG rhythm strip in Minecraft. How was it done? Well, I did some experimenting, tried a different couple different things in this world, but let's go take a look. If you'll notice here, I've got a minecart track set up with some random zombies in minecarts going around. Pretty much what I did was I built over here the EKGs themselves in wool. So it's already built and laying on the ground and I can't actually just walk through it all because the way I did this, let's go back up to the top and show you guys. I'm going to start it all. Every single rhythm that I have going on here. This is something you guys can do yourself if you'd like. So I got all the rhythms running at once. And I have this clock up in the sky that constantly runs. Now most of these command blocks don't do anything. I was doing multiple different things in this world. Um, but the main ones that do are these three right here. I'm going to change one of them real quick now. Just so everything sticks around and I can show you guys what's going on. So basically, I've layered the different EKG rhythms. The lower layer is the normal sinus rhythm. The layer above that is my VTAC. The layer above that is my VFib. And then I just got a flat line going straight on across. Now over here, as you can see, all my little zombie friends riding their mine carts and cruising along. I have them on set up on such a delay and each zombie has a name. The first one in the line, it's just these sets of three. The first one in the line is EKG. Second one's EKG one. And the third one is EKG two. So I spawn in these zombies, riding these minecarts, so that they basically just keep going across the world. They do fall into a void pit at the end there. And then on my clock, all I do is tell it, since we start out with a red wool, actually we start out with barrier blocks. I turn everything into barrier blocks. So the first thing we do is from the point of the zombie, who's named EKG, so this is the first one, is I fill 100 blocks to the right of me 
with wool six, which is a pink wool, replacing only barrier blocks. So if it ever finds a barrier block directly on the same Y plane, but directly out on the Z coordinate, it'll change a barrier block into a red wool. Once it does that, the second zombie follows behind. And the second zombie, he is named EKG1. It fills everything next to him on that same plane, but it replaces any pink wool blocks with a red wool block, which is the wool 14. And finally, the third zombie, EKG2. He basically goes through and replaces all wool. All, right now I have wool 11. That was so everything would stick around there. But normally it would be the red wool blocks back to barrier blocks. So if I change that back to barrier blocks, you'll see the sections Continue, continuing to move on. That gives it the, the look and feel that it's actually moving and are constantly going. Granted, I don't have much control over the speed of this thing because it is a minecart. So being that it's a minecart, I can't really do much except for watch the speed go. I would like this EKG to go faster. That would be my ultimate goal. Now, if we go, I'm going to let that all finish. So now if I run back to normal sinus rhythm, if I turn normal sinus rhythm back on, and you'll see we have zombie number one is the pink zombie. So he's turning all those blocks next to him into the pink wool from the barrier blocks. After that, there's a guy that follows that turns all those pink blocks into red blocks, and there's a longer delay, and then somebody who turns all those red blocks back into the blank blocks to show that the rhythm is starting over. So then when I stop the process, it basically, instead of it continuously sending multiple zombies out on a loop, which it's currently doing, see, you can see sets of three just going on and on and on. They just continue on. This actually stops the progress of the zombies from moving on. And we'll finish out the rhythm, and it will go into nothing and stop and prepare for me to run the next rhythm. Which all this does is layer the, the next uh, set of zombies is up one Z coordinate. So when it looks over, it's not looking at the normal sinus rhythm layer. It's now looking at my VTAC layer. So that's how this was done. Now, one thing that it might be kind of cool is if I do this right, if I go down over here and give myself a map, I think... Oh, I moved out of the way, so I moved out of range, so it stopped actually finishing that. But I think if I start this map right here, okay, that was not where I wanted to start this map. So maybe I need to start the map in the middle of this thing. I'm not sure exactly where I should start the map. We're going to run the, uh, the VTAC again as well while I'm up here. And then turn it off just so it kills it all. But if I go right in the middle of this thing... Nope, I don't want the map there either. I think I must be on just the border of a chunk, so I might not be able to do this right. But if you put this in the proper spot in your world, you would actually be able to put a an EKG rhythm strip basically on a map, and you could look at it and be like, look at the rhythm that I'm in now. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little Minecraft redstone experiment where you got to learn something about cardiac rhythm and EKGs, as well as see something really cool happen in Minecraft. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.